But if we do disobey and we do touch that stove, then we get burned, you know? And then we're like, oh, wow, God, I see why. I see. But I just like that. I just like thinking about how our obedience and then even how our holiness will give blessings into our lives. And we don't even realize it because... I guess we. I'm st- I know I'm stubborn, and I used to. <laughs> so I'm the same way. I thought I'd never meet anybody as stubborn as I am. <laughs> I was so stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am like a freaking bull. Yes. Girl, I used to be fighting God. I'm like, God, this is why I want. Now leave me alone. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. He's like, baby girl. And the one thing I've always prayed, because I know how stubborn I am. It's like, God, I don't ever want your permissive will. Because I want a gener- I, I want to have children with the, in a certain legacy that I'm going to pass down. I don't want God's permissive will. I don't want to be with the man the man I thought I was supposed to be with. And then he's not going to church. And then he's not teaching yeah. my children <laughs> what I want him to teach. I want... I want that man of God that God has for me so that we will leave the legacy that we need so that they can go and spread the gospel, you know? Um, so, girl, yes. I would pray that prayer, and God, every single time, I would be stubborn. He would he would not let it work out. <laughs> but now I see it as a blessing because I would not be the one I am today if it did not, you know? So, yeah. Yep. I actually found it. It was Matthew 5, night. Well, you see, Holy Spirit had us go there anyway. Matthew, <laughs> All right, so it starts at um, 22, okay. and it ends about 25, kind of. Okay. So it says, By saying to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring... Thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother has aught against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way first to be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So I was thinking about the holiness of God, because God, um, he was talking to me about some things, and when regards to my Bible study and prayer and worship Mm -hmm. to him, and um, it was less than, I guess, holy, because he, this is what he said, he said three parts. He said, um, in this regard, this is holy. He said, I'm a holy God, and our time together is holy. So you should respect it as such. So if I'm giving like halfway prayers or halfway Bible study and my heart isn't pure and like stuff, then he's saying like, you need to count this as holy too. So that's why I was thinking about holiness. Am I getting... If, am I giving a defiled offering to God? Mm-hmm. Is my heart in a place where I'm praying to him, but it's not a clean prayer? Like just the boy was saying in the scripture, you're not reconciled. So is there something in my own personal life that's making my offering or prayer or worship or Bible study defiled unto God? So I was just thinking about that. And just mainly like a lot of the Old Testament, because, you know, they'd be like, Oh, if you want to approach God, you got to wash like this many times yeah. and you got to take off all of this. So I was just thinking about the holiness of God and do I regard him as that type of holy before I even approach him? Or am I just giving him whatever type of Winston he going to get today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Ooh, that was good. What scripture I read that really stood out to me this week was Matthew 11... Um, and it's 20 to like, I don't remember, but it's like 20 onward. And it's when God is like condemning the cities where Jesus performed his miracles. And he's like, um, if Jesus would have done his miracles in Sodom, it would mm-hmm. still be here Shake. until this day. Um, and so he was basically saying to them, like, Sodom will get shown more mercy than you guys will because you guys didn't turn away from your sin and, you know, believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior. And so I just took that to my life. And so it's just like, wow. Like I look at homosexuality, when I think about homosexuality, I'm like, dang, that's horrible. That's bad. But God literally just said that you who are not turning away from your sin, whatever that sin may be, because everybody has sin in their life. It may not be as big as others, but you who are not turning away from that sin and really trying to dedicate your life to Christ, you're not going to be shown as much mercy as those people who I'm looking at like <laughs> oh my gosh like you're so sinful so just kind of put it into retrospect for me and what my life needs to look like in terms of holiness and that's it mm. so. 
we talked about yeah. like being our authentic self mm -hmm. um, yeah, earlier. So, about in Romans yeah. 12, mm -hmm. we looked at Romans 12. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't this beautiful? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, also to talk about what you guys were talking about, I don't know what y'all were talking about, but like in terms of family, mm -hmm. um, what was what was the topic? Well, yeah, I was trying to think it. Well, how did yeah. I get there? I was she was just, saying like uh, children are innocent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what, like, what it made me think about because you started talking about like generational curses and how mm -hmm. like you want to really change those things in your family. Mm -hmm. and it just really resonated with me because I wouldn't say like my family, the women in my family have a generational curse. One, they're always by themselves, mm -hmm. don't have a man, single mom, taking care of her kids, the men that they were with was not a good guy mm -hmm. um, and it got a little better from my grandfather mm -hmm. to my father but I just wanted to stop like I don't want it to be there anymore and sometimes mm -hmm. I talk to my mom kind of try to probe and I really came to the conclusion it's because she doesn't really understand mm -hmm. what a godly man looks like mm -hmm. or the type of man she was supposed to seek after mm -hmm. initially and so it puts a lot of responsibility on me to be in my word and mm -hmm. be a young Christian woman of God so that I can not only attract the right man that I want to be with, but I can be able to see clearly exactly who isn't it mm -hmm. and um, who to stand clear from. Yeah. So that really resonated with me. And then another thing that I really realized in my family, and it's also in the world, is that a lot of people say that they're Christian, mm -hmm. but are you really a Christian? Mm -hmm. Though, because even my mom, my mom says she's a Christian, but <laughs> there's some stuff that she doesn't know. And I'm like, bro, like, you a grown lady. Like, you've been, you're supposed to be knee deep in the game. Like, how don't you to know mom. that? To <laughs> mom. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to mom. <laughs> but no, that's how I be looking. And then I also um, just think about other family members that I have. And even, y'all know I talked about my cousin Harry freaking. It's true. Like, but we were talking the other day. And she was like, she's a Christian or whatever. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> what am I saying? You don't even know who I'm talking about. Okay. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I have a lot of cousins, by the way. But anyway, she said she was a Christian. I've really, really been thinking about that because Carl had sent me this sermon by this guy. And he was talking about how so many people say they are Christians, but their their life does not reflect it. The fruit that they're bearing does not reflect it. The people who they're around does not reflect who they're saying that they are. And once again, I've been saying that kind of frequently, but it really just put this pressure on me to be that example of a Christian because Christians, quote unquote, look at you and they're like, okay, well, if she said that curse word, then I can take it overboard. Like if she said, hell, I can go say, you know, so, you know, anything. <laughs> if she orders a drink, Right here and right now, I can go get bottle service. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just stupid drunk. So it's just really put that into retrospect. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really our job as Christians to really set that standard of what a godly and holy, fearful person really looks mm -hmm. like, and not just for our sake, but for the sake of others and God's children. So I have a question: If one hasn't, or if you haven't been setting that standard, is it appropriate to go apologize or how do you handle that if you haven't been setting such a standard? I have, have apologized. Have you guys been through that before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never apologized. <laughs> you just, no, That's I pride. just started living better. <laughs> 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 just started living better. <laughs> that is pride. That is pride. Um, yeah, I, would, I would pray about how to handle it because I know I've gone back and apologized. I've apologized yeah. Can you like explain yeah, the situation? Okay, so if you're living less than the Christian <laughs> and you got other Christians around you. <laughs> Whatever, we're being open. Um I had my I had a really big fall. You know, like when you first um get into Christianity what we were just talking mm -hmm. about and you're like radical and you're mm -hmm. excited and you're just doing the absolute most sometimes and people are just looking for you and they're waiting and waiting and they're waiting and then it happens and you fall and then you realize you just made a really huge fall it's like oh my god so I really did have to go back and apologize and be like 
like, I'm sorry, this is not the standard that I'm trying to show. This is not who I am. Mm -hmm. I just had a moment, yet don't think I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to be perfect, you know. Um, I do serve a God who is perfect now, I'm sorry. Like, I really do apologize. And some people may take it, and some people may think it's a joke, and, you know, you just have to really figure out who's supposed to be in your circle, and I did, I lost a lot of people in my circle, just for Which apologizing. Okay. They're like, oh, it's okay, Maya, you're just being yourself, and I'm like, yeah, I know, I wasn't, that's not really who I am, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's not okay, so I've had to do that, and it is hard, it is hard girl. like trying to bring yourself to that point, because I am so stubborn, mm -hmm. Um, but I, could, I couldn't sleep, but I would lose sleep. See, now I hate you know moments like saying? this because like, now it's going to convict me to go. Convict me. Or that spirit. Now I'm going to have to be by the mess. I'm like, no. I was just me. Uh, I, I was pray about how to actually <laughs> handle it, how the yeah. Lord wants you to handle but the Lord is trying to break that pride out of me. Mm -hmm. So I had to go apologize. Yeah, for me, it was, um, I had to do something real bad to this guy for years. <laughs> I was so mad at him. I was so mad at him. Um, and he actually called me about it. And I was like, I, I, I thought I was like in the right, y'all. I was so in the right. And I was like, God, if I'm in the wrong, then you let me know. And of course, I didn't <laughs> think he was going to answer that prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, and I was like, okay, well, what, 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 where did this come from? And so when he showed me, like, you know, he was like, you were hurt. So therefore you acted out like this. You're very immature, Sabrina. You need to apologize. And I said, oh my God, I do not want to apologize to this guy who hurt me so bad for so many years. I don't want to do it. But I put my girl, big girl panties on and I did it. And um, I, what I really did pray for was just that he would forgive me. Because I was, in, I was like in the wrong, like it hurt me that I did that to him. Mm -hmm. It hurt me so bad. And the fact that I'm walking around years later saying that I'm a Christian and but like, yeah like I'm doing these things to him it, it was crazy and I, and I heard a lot of people um, in the process but I was a hurt person so I explained to him I was like you know I, I, I do want to confess that you know I did this to you and when we did talk I was very prideful and I, I even owned up to my pride and I said well I did all those actions because I was hurt. I was I was very hurt at what you did to me. And what it really did was it brought forgiveness and healing to, to the both of us. Because then he called me. Um, and we apologized to each other for all the things that we did to each other throughout the years. So it just, I think it brought the unity. I, yeah, I like that. It just brings <laughs> a lot more unity um, into the church. And it, it, it's just crazy, you know, I think about it. Like, what if everybody just went to, to their people and was like, no, I'm sorry. I did this because I was messed up inside, and this is what was messed up, and this is how I got messed up, you know? Um, and I just want to say, you know, that was not me. That's not God. God mm -hmm. has dealt with me on it, and now I'm operating in this way. And so if you do hear of this reoccurring, just know that it was in my past and know that I am changed. Um, but, yeah, I, I like that because it brought a lot of healing in unity. And, it, it, and imagine if you do that, like, in your families, with your with your family and with your friendship because they're – it's hurt and betrayal that hurts people and it turns people away from God. It's the people that, Christian people, people <laughs> you know, and, the, and that hardens other people's hearts to God. And they're like, I don't want to be a Christian. Yeah. Why, why do I want to live this life? And you acting a fool. You know? Acting a fool. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like holiness, I love how we came back to that. What I was talking about is what inspires holiness for me. And, mm. and um, living right and doing the right things and it is breaking those generational curses um and i've been saying something recently it's like when we have more whole women whole women people who are really searching themselves and saying god fix me um and men of god saying you know god fix me i want to live holy i want to live for you just make me whole when we have a whole man a whole woman and then they make whole children. That's the thing. Like, but that's the thing, though. People, today's generation don't really understand that. They mm -hmm. don't understand what they're supposed to bring to a relationship. They exactly. don't understand that 
you need to work on if you're not a perfected single mm -hmm. there's no way you can come and join with somebody and mm -hmm. have a perfected relationship mm -hmm. you're gonna bring your nonsense he's gonna bring his foolishness <laughs> and y'all just gonna be <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> right. ridiculousness you know? yeah and, but i love how you even Perfect. brought in your mama because me my mom was a single mom too and that's a generational curse that's in my family and i said not me no. i will not be the one and so god fixed me and and my mom when you grow up with your mom it's like a single household you think she's like everything when my yes. mom passed Girl, up I was, I, was single mom. I thought she was everything but while my mom was everything while she was a woman of god she still had her own problems yeah Even and her own i problems realized them as i got me, older you know? mm -hmm. yeah and so those are things that god still just even had to fix out with fix within me because then to look at your mom and be like dang mama you had you had problems like with, with telling the wrong man to go away like you pass that on to me, like mm -hmm. holding on to something that I'm not supposed to have. You pass that on to me, and it's just that was really hard. But and we're not my perfect. Mom did the different mm -hmm. thing, like my mom just showed me, like, bye, like, what mm -hmm. would you do? Nope, I'm done talking to you. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to do mm -hmm. with you. It wasn't until like my ex boyfriend that I actually tried not to be that way, mm -hmm. and then it actually backfired on me, mm -hmm. and so as my own woman outside of my mother i had to come to god mm -hmm. and learn the right way yes so and so many people i feel like god's such a mystery to everybody so they just don't know and they, and they just give up and they just drop the ball and it's mm -hmm. like well i just don't know but that brings me back to what i said earlier it's like when i don't know something i'm like god i see this within me i see this within my family i don't know how to fix it show me and he shows me every single time it's like God is my own psychologist. Things that psychologists, I go to a counselor for weeks and they would not be able to figure me out. When I tell you, when I prayed that prayer, God, would, I would be fixed within the next three days. It would not, it would, it would be like that. Just automatic healing from things, from generational curses that have been passed down. And so I'm just really embracing the single life right now because it's in my single life that I know that I'm going to become the woman God. God has it's a really beautiful thing that a lot of girls just don't like get they don't like <laughs> they feel all like the post you see you yeah see snatch ice on right oh, there's this I'm negative so connotation lonely. but singleness yeah let me not say singleness, singleness period, doesn't equal loneliness. but singleness in christ is a beautiful thing that time with god learning who you are as a woman what defines you outside of a male mm -hmm. knowing that if you outside meet a guy a and he <laughs> treats you wrong or he does something to you you can literally walk away because the love of god feels so much better mm -hmm. you know like that's a beautiful thing and a lot of females need to learn that but they always have an excuse like i've told friends upon friends like you know what i see it in your life that you need to spend some time alone like mm -hmm. i see you in relationship after relationship after relationship holding on to toxic man after toxic man after toxic man you need to spend some time by yourself and learn you and they'll be like you know i don't think like that's the walk for every woman i don't think every female or every person needs to learn how to be by yourself but if you don't know yourself alone how can mm -hmm. you be anything yeah you know? and it goes so much deeper i think god i mean people need to stop looking at god as yeah we're serving god but we're also living with him like we are one with him so he he's literally everything to us and he should be enough this, huh he should be enough yeah, yeah I was he just should. Saying this earlier um like people have a hard time facing when they become a christian they have a hard time facing um the things that they've been called to do or just facing who mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. and, and the bad things that are within them mm -hmm. um and not fixing them because um, it's hard to fix those things. And a lot of people, they don't want to put in the work. The they work. just don't want to put in the work. And it is, it's, it is work. And as a single woman, I came to this, um, I don't know, God kind of gave me this revelation. I had kind of like an aha moment mm -hmm. where he, you know, the word alone is just like devastating. I'm like, I don't want to be single anymore. I've been single for four years now. And um, he's just like, I, I want you to continue to be all one with me. When you break mm -hmm. up that word alone, it's all one. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. You're alone with me. Mm -hmm. And kind of just looking at it like that, I'm like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got, you know, I, I, I love being all one with you, right? Mm -hmm. so, Yo, yeah. that I goes like with that. the... I'm sorry. That was cool. I finally found the verse. It's... Um, First Timothy 6 6 and it's, it's very short 
it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm -hmm. So are you like, I, basically what we were saying, is God enough for you? And can you be satisfied with just your calling and your ministry and no extra? Like, if I don't have a spouse and I, I just have God, I'm winning souls, is that enough? Mm -hmm. If I can live pure and holy, is that enough? If I'm not rich and famous, is that enough? So mm -hmm. that's what was the verse I was trying to look for. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Because a lot of people, they'd be like, man, I'm Christian, and now I can't do all this stuff I want to do. You shouldn't want to do that anymore. You should be content in your godliness. It's not that easy. And I will, yeah. <laughs> 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 the one question I will always like to ask myself is why do I keep going in this cycle? And people don't ask that question. Mm -hmm. For me, I was with that one guy for five years in a toxic relationship because I didn't know my value. I just did not know my value. And I did not know what I brought to the relationship. I thought he was all I could get. And then it was this year that I had a revelation. God was like, you know, it's, it's, you have so much within you. It's a personality that I put inside of you. It's your smile. It's the, it's the way your hair lays. It's everything about you that the is edges. your value, you know? Yeah, your God. character, your silliness. Your, I, I used to feel so bad for being loud, y'all, because I'm just a loud person. He was like, I made you loud. That's fine. You have a voice that projects to your <laughs> ministry, praise God. Like, he, he, just, he just showed me oh, out of everything, even the, bad, the things that people saw as bad in me, as, I just saw it as good. And so knowing my value, then I was able to get over that. And so then that's a generational curse nipped in the bud because I know who I am and I know my value. Yeah, that's good. And just to piggyback on what you said about all one, um, I was literally in my car the other day and I was like, because I'm going on a single, I'm on a single path. Mm. And so I'm like, so like, what do you say when somebody tries to talk to you? And I was like, I'm in a relationship. Like, <laughs> I'm literally in a relationship. Like, that's what I'm in right now. And mm. I, I don't know when I'm going to be ready to allow somebody into that relationship. Mm. But mm. I'm currently in a relationship right now. That's and I'm okay with that. You know? That's good, girl. So. When I was an extreme Christian, I'd be like, I'm thinking, Jesus. <laughs> people would be like, what? Do you see okay. I used to wear my ring on my left hand? Like, seriously. And be like, are you married? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Technically, I am. <laughs> the bride of Christ. I used to be like that. Now I wear it on my right hand. <laughs> I love the balance. I'm coming back a long way. Yeah, I have to. I have to. <laughs> oh goodness. But yeah, that was a good conversation. I just think it, this just solid, this conversation solidifies how singleness um, perfects holiness. Is that it right? Does. Because people always look at marriage and it's like, oh yeah, when you get married, it's supposed to perfect holiness. You know, make you holy. But no, we fam. can achieve holiness like right now. <laughs> exactly. It is to make you more holy. A lot of people say that. Like I was talking to my right. friend and I was telling her how I can't see myself dating a man that is less, like at a lower place in his walk mm -hmm. than I am. Mm -hmm. And she just could not, she could not understand, she, could she couldn't, that. she couldn't grasp her so hands around it. that. Like, I just don't want <laughs> to, I want us to be equally yoked. I want you to feed my mind like I'm feeding your mind, feeding mm -hmm. my spirit like I'm feeding your spirit. Like, I don't want to have to be dragging you up to where I am. In addition to that, if he's the, this is, I don't know if this is pointless, but he's the head of my household. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm supposed to, if I read a scripture and I need clarification, I'm supposed to go to him for clarification. Mm -hmm. How can you be, down here. you know, down here? Yeah. And, and she literally could not, she could I not. Don't do it. <laughs> no. and for me, I couldn't settle for something like that because I know the generational person I'm trying to bring. Right. You know? You know? So. So. Yeah. And the I thing is, like, that. as women, we settle. We're like, well, he is walking with God. Right. It could be worse. If that's where I was. <laughs> yeah. You know? like, could be worse. I'm so lonely right now. It could be worse. He's trying. So, you know, whatever. But it's hard. It oh, really it's is hard. And oh, he asks you questions that you can't answer or you know it's, it was so frustrating to the point where I just kind of broke up with him for no I didn't even have a reason I was just like I don't want to be together <laughs> and I had to go back and apologize like a year later I'm like I'm sorry but I just 
I can't do this. He's like, what happened? We went on a date yesterday. I thought everything was <laughs> God said like, no. no. I'm tired of you. And he wasn't a, he wasn't a bad guy. So mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. So what do y'all think with, I was just doing the parts of holiness and like holiness. How do y'all think y'all holiness and wholeness is going though for y'all? Wait, you mm -hmm. gotta ask the question again. Do y'all feel whole, like where your holiness is? Um, no. Okay. I feel like where I'm at right now is that I am growing. I fall, I get up, I fall, I get up, but I don't fall as far as I used to fall in the past. And um, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And I am enjoying the journey. I'm working on not being as self condemning because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I used to be in this place where I would like, a coast knows. I used to like drop kick myself mm. for like messing <laughs> up. Like for not living properly. <laughs> but you know, it comes with the maturity. As you mature as a Christian, you understand that it's normal to fall. You understand when it's not acceptable, how low it's not acceptable to fall. And it's a growing process. And I, I like the journey. Mm. Um, I'm definitely growing as a young Christian woman. And I'm not whole, but I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Do you think you can ever be whole? Yeah, yeah, I think so. yeah. definitely. All the way, you don't need to learn anything else. You're just no. That's not that's, that's not a wholeness. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a oneness with God yeah. uh, and, a, oh, and yeah. a closeness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wait, why did you say no? I said no because um, right now I was telling them before you guys got here that I feel like I'm in a spiritual warfare right now. Because of school. <laughs> yeah. That was real. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right on the money. <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of it. Um, and I just, I do feel like, I mean, uh, there a lot of young Christians right now at this moment are going through a spiritual warfare. I was talking to some of my classmates about it today, and everybody was like feeling the same way. Hmm. And um, I. And I know in times like this is where you should be praying the most and seeking yeah. the most. And I have not. Mm -hmm. I just cannot even find it in myself to, like, do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said no. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, this has been great. And I'm trying to get there. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of brought a lot of clarification tonight. And just fellowship in itself. Mm -hmm. Um, really just yeah. encourages me and, and sharpens me in a way that you'll never, you'll never know. So this was, this was really good for me today. Yeah. That is good. I feel like I was just telling them, like, when I, this year, this season I was going through, I was praying, God, make me into the woman that you called me to be. Mm. And he was showing me myself or something. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, dang, I didn't know I was this bad. And so I would pray, well, I don't know how to fix it, fix it for me, you know? And so being real with myself, with the ugliest parts of myself, like I told them, I, I had jealousy issues. And for a girl, that's like the worst thing to have. Like, you don't want to have jealousy it issues. Can make you better, yeah. yeah, and it, it can make you feel really, really bad. And so I, I asked God to fix that in me. He did fix that in me. I don't have jealousy issues anymore. So it's just like facing those ugliest parts. There was other things that I had dealt with that were really ugly. Um, that God just really worked out. So now I do feel like I'm in a place where I am I am whole. Um, my I used to be in a position where if I was in a relationship with either a friend or a boyfriend, then I would become very attached to them, and then I'll start lacking my relationship with God. And right now I'm in a place where it's like I have my friend, my relationship with my friends, and even my whoever I'm going to be dating, I'll have my relationship, and then but I still have my relationship with God, and it's no longer like a battle or a tug like. He's just part of, of me, and I feel like it is a journey to get whole. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it starts with being real with yourself. Being starts with being real with the life that you lived, mm -hmm. the experiences that you have experienced, um, the people who have hurt you, the things that you have done, and the things that are ugly within you that you have to face, and that you have to be willing to just give over to God and let God really talk to you about them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And defining who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. When I was undefined, that's when I would like end up smoking or um, <clears throat> going out and getting super drunk and it was just because I didn't know who I was as a person. Mm -hmm. um, 
but now that I know who I am as a person, it's so easy for me to be like, that's just not me. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my biggest fears, like with my graduation party coming up, my cousins coming in town, is that they're going to be like, oh, like hit the line. Like, because when we get together, like we get <laughs> drunk, <laughs> and we're high, and we just act out. Like, mm-hmm. we just act the fool, and it's a great time. But now, I and my fear was, what do I say? Like, what do I say? I don't want to condemn them. I don't want to be like, I'm not about to do it because I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to be now, like, I'm a Christian too. I'm smoking. What do you mean? Right. And no, but then you tell them, yo, this I mean, is how you live. Yeah, that you know, too. Witness. But I can literally, in addition to being like, I mean, I can just say, well, that's not me. Like, that is not me. You say you're a Christian, but I say I'm a Christian and I want to reflect the holy life. That's not me. And I couldn't say that before. And I'm not, I'm not laughing you're at not you. you're not a Christian. <laughs> 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 I'm not you're not a Christian. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> that's what, that's I, I don't be wanting to tell people. Like, yeah. who am I to tell you you're not a Christian? Right, right. Yo, you right. giving the mom, word, bro. My boss <laughs> says you're, you're not a Christian. Christian. I started laughing because my boss said, you know, we have Christian. We're Christians, so we have standards. And so when somebody's like, oh, you're not going to smoke it, be like, bro, why are you smoking? Like, porcupine the question back at them. Right. Like, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. I had one, one of my porcupine friends, they were trying to make me. I never yeah, I thought she was that. saying popcorn, no, not porcupine. porcupine. Right. Because like when you throw, yeah. when you throw a porcupine, you don't want to oh, hold yeah. it. Like, hey, stuck, yo. So, you like, <laughs> <laughs> so he told me, my boss, he came across that because my friends are trying to get me to lower my standards. I want to be with a certain guy because I want to break those generational curses. And so they were like, man, you need to go there and there, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. That's how my boss was. He was like, you should just throw it back at them. Why do you feel like you need to date everybody? Damn it! Why? Why are you gonna be like that long? I don't feel like I. That's a thing. Like, that's a fetch. You know, it does. It makes you think about why they're actually doing what they're doing. So I just thought that was funny. So that is funny. Because yeah, people do, they try to make you feel weird, the worst. stupid they about not. Yeah, like why aren't you hitting the button? It's like. Oh, okay. why, are well, why are you? Why? Oh, yeah. why are you? It makes you feel good. Oh, who well, doesn't do that for me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so I do that with yeah. Jesus. <laughs> He's free. I, I don't need <laughs> You know, right? <laughs> you want to hit this? <laughs> are you trying to hit this? Well, let's take it to another level. Like, <laughs> 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 go on a journey. <laughs> To another space, we're gonna go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we decided. Right. Oh, that's funny. How about you, Carl? Where's your holy and wholeness? Uh, God's been showing me, like, like you said, like all like the stuff that I overlook and like the dirt and just junk and like in my life and in my heart and like stuff that like I never realized happened. Like, the reason that I do the things that I do now is, like, because of stuff, like, in my childhood. Mm-hmm. Like, people bondage, like, going in, like, isolation, not telling people about stuff and, like, keeping things to myself when I should, like, really confess them and go up to people and, like, mm-hmm. apologize or, like, settle the issue or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, a lot of the stuff that he's been dealing with. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Yeah. Well, it's really, that. like... <laughs> It is scary, like, to see, like, <laughs> like, dang, I did not know, like, I was, like, that's, like, I was, like, self-righteous about, like, everything. Mm. About what? Everything. Not, like, self-righteous, but, like, prideful yeah. and like, mm-hmm. pompous about, mm. like, everything. And that's caused me to, like, fall a lot of times. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I didn't, like, ask right. him to fix it. Ask him to fix it. Yeah. Because for me, it's like, when he was showing me stuff, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know. Yeah, that's like, realize. the thing is, like, I try to fix it myself, which is. But you can't fix it. It's yeah. true. Exactly. I realize that. <laughs> I see that. Like, I didn't know how, I did not know how stubborn I was until I had to, like, apologize to somebody. Mm-hmm. That's, like, what happened that last time I was here, like, when we went to uh, James's house, mm-hmm. and, yeah, it was a big mess. I did not know how to that stuff. Mm. Like, it was, like, it was, like, literally, like, painful. <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt like, I hey, yo, why did I do this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was driving over there. I was like, man, man I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And it was like, and then it started, like, a whole, like, fiasco and stuff. And I was like, uh, should have just did it before. And mm. I felt like I should have done it. But, mm. Did it now, so. Yeah. Freedom. But I think it's a beautiful thing. I was trying to wait to what? see if anybody else. Had it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three takes. <laughs> 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 I'm 
Oh, another thing. Oh, it's such a beautiful <laughs> thing. Like when we do work to be whole as Christians, because I just think about like the the friendships that can flourish within the mm-hmm. in the church, the unity that can be brought about, the family that can be healed. Like mm-hmm. it's just a beautiful picture. I'm just imagining it all in my head. It's just amazing. And it's really motivating to achieve that wholeness and to mm-hmm. achieve, achieve that holiness. Yeah. Yeah, I got some work to do, though. Mm-hmm. Like, what God has revealed to me lately is that I have... No, I don't think he revealed this. I think I knew this all my life. But I have a horrible attitude. Like, if you want to see a glimpse of my attitude, be with me in traffic. Or, like, <laughs> when somebody does something in traffic that they're not supposed to do. And, um... It's really bad because it affects me and my mom's relationship. Mm-hmm. And I really need to pray about... I have prayed about, like, where my anger comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a bad attitude. And it's really obnoxious and it's really horrible. Mm. And I don't know how to... Yeah. And I prayed about it. But it's not with everything. Um... No, it can be with any any anybody. Anybody can get, can this get work. that. <laughs> but no. For some people, I have a like I can. Short temper. Yeah, for some people, it's just like automatic. Like, Are you violence? Do you have violence in your family? No, but I'm Liberian. Okay. So, Liberian. I have yeah. I have Asian in my family. We have, okay. We're very high head. Like my yeah, what? Like zero to one hundred. No, you're what in your family? Asian. Oh, yeah. I got feel for people. Oh well, my mom. Yeah. Well, my like I'm not oh, from Barbados. My mom isn't from Barbados, but she grew up like she spent a little bit of time of her life in Barbados, and her tempers like so. I don't know where that came from. It really runs in my family. Like my grandfather was really abusive to my grandmother, <laughs> yes. and he had a hot temper too. Like, but my grandfather's temper was like like, and my uncle's temper is that. It's just it's a generational curse. Mm. Well, for me, I know that I had that, and so when God was showing me my value. He, like, I just imagine, like, this, I'm just going to use this. It was like a cup. And so all the great things that I, I loved about myself, I was like, God just deposited that stuff in me. Mm-hmm. And so then I had this ticket of anger, and I was like, he ain't deposit that in me. So I just throw it to the side. So in relation to my grandmother, me and my grandmother, I had to learn how to live with her. I had some serious anger issues. I even still deal with it right now. If I don't mm-hmm. catch myself, then I can <laughs> catch from myself, like, being mean to her or mm-hmm. speaking out of turn. But uh, when God did give me that revelation and did show me, you know, I didn't put that inside of you. Mm -hmm. It was easy for me to catch myself and be like, patience. Okay, God. Okay, Grandma. What you need? What's going on? (laughs) Okay. And so it was like God deposited. I chose patience instead of anger. But that can get really hard. And that takes steadfastness and perseverance to just always keep that mindset, which I have not always kept. It's but like maybe my mom and my little brother. <laughs> the ones who you should love the most. They, and they are, are the, the ones closest, I love bro. the most. Ask her. My little brother is my heart and soul. Like, I love him to death. And I love my mom to death. But those two people get my attitude the worst. Because they're the closest to you. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. And that's uh, Fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5. Temperance. Um, patience and self control. Mm. Like, <laughs> so. they're hard things to master. I would do good, like, with my self control, but I understand because me and my mom, like, even today, like, it's just something about, like, when I see her, it's like my attitude. No. Just turn up. <laughs> like, the and I was, and out. I was thinking like, about Galatians 5. I was like, Lord, okay, am I living by the fruit of the Spirit? And I would try, but when I see her face, it's just like, go out the window. So I'm trying. So I'm going to think about what you said. Mm-hmm. And I will also ask the question, like, is there any is there any resentment? Or is there anything that you all went through? I'm just, I'm getting God's psychologist together, because this is the thing that I ask myself. Mm-hmm. From my grandmother, my resentment came mm-hmm. from when my mom passed away. And then I had to move in with her. And so with every single person in my life, when they would try to step in the place of my mom, they tried to call me their daughter that infuriated me because it's like no you're not my mom you're not going to dictate my life like you are my mom my mom raised me I'm 18 years old for me I'm grown I'm paying my own bills it was just a lot of stuff that was within me that was just automatic resentment for my grandmother and so I had to go to my grandma and talk to her about those things I was like yo and even my aunt praise God my aunt's in the house because my aunt's a psychologist and she noticed like every single time you call her your daughter 
you're stepping out of line. Sabrina doesn't like that. You're not, you're her grandmother. Like, and I just feel like people just try to take a place, and that's so frustrating to me because nobody will ever to be able to take the place mm. from my mom. But that was my root of anger. That was with my and concerning my grandmother. And I'm still working on it, like being snappy and stuff like that. Because now she's just old, and I have to deal with her being <laughs> old. old. You know? And you know, older people, like, yeah. they have no they filter. Eat. And they say what they want to say, how uh, they want to say it, when they want to say it. Yeah. And not say nothing. Yes. about it because I feel like when I turn 80 that's what I want I feel like listen I've done me a lot too. of living mm-hmm. so let me say what I got anything okay. my yeah. time is limited so let me get it off that I'm just saying <laughs> who was that boy you bought in my house yeah. <laughs> 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 anything will be said when I reach that age oh my gosh <laughs> that's so right. that's for sake of heart though man Man, she's perfectly patient for me. But it just goes back to how the people, you know, the people that are closest to you, they get on your nerves the most, and they, they pull out the ugliest parts about you, but they're making you more holy in reality. Because you're noticing those things, right. and you're you're able to perfect those things. And I really do pe- believe that God puts us in situations and puts us around people that are going to make us holier. And, for example, like my aunt, because we all, like my mom was like a turning point for the whole entire family. My aunt moved from Maryland. Mm-hmm. to um, live with us and she had never lived with us ever she always was just on her own in Baltimore and so you got a child who was raised by a New York family mm-hmm. you got a grandmother who's from New York and then you got an aunt from who's just playing up north we butted head so bad but um, I really do think that God brought my aunt down because she's she's not married yet but if my aunt got married when she moved what five years ago she would have a, I, I guarantee that she would have had a divorce by now because um, she just didn't know how to live with people. She didn't know how to commune with people. She was not patient at all. And me and my brother, we pulled that out in her. Like, no, we're going to come in. You're going to come in. You're going to say hi. You're going to ask about how my day is. You're just going to be patient and just really learn how to live with somebody. Um, so now she's completely different. Like, she recently she's been waking up listening to TDJ. I'm like, <laughs> what? What? I feel like praise God, I rubbed off on them, they waking up listening to sermons now, <laughs> but it's just a whole new sweetness to my aunt, she, mm-hmm. she's real rough, it's a whole new sweetness, a whole new patience with her, um, she she even thinks about me when she's just out, like she'll get me food, and I didn't even ask for it, she's just a sweet, per, sweeter person now, um, and I know she probably doesn't even see it, but um, yeah, I feel like just through those hard times and those hard situations, she was able to become a better person, and God really did work in her and she's dating now and she has a guy who wants to marry her and so I really just think that yeah just just think about the future <laughs> it's gonna work out don't yeah. put yourself up over I gotta it. get that straight before I meet any man because <laughs> <laughs> the closer you get to me the more my attitude gets turned um, uh-huh. it's a problem <laughs> so let's take some real world applications for the week how yeah, to live holy and also to gain wholeness. So what are y'all going to apply to your life, daily lives? Constant reflection, definitely for like the holiness and wholeness part. If you don't know what's wrong, then you don't know what to fix or what to ask God to fix or what can you, or yeah, what to ask God to fix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, I would say discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah, discipline and just being vigilant about the things that you let into your life. I was talking earlier about catching those little foxes. Yeah. Um, and just how things build up and tax onto us little by little. And then all of a sudden we're de- dealing with this big, huge monster where we have fallen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's because because we were dabbling in it and dibbling mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. in the gray areas. Mm-hmm. Um, so just keeping things black and white in my life. Being disciplined. Black and white. Um, yeah, just I'm I, I continue to like I'm I feel like I'm in a good place right now, but I do continue to pray that prayer. Like God, show me the things that are are still wrong within me. What am I not doing right? And fix it. So that's what I I'm I'm, I'm sticking to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so um, mine would be actually being really intentional about my relationship with the Lord, especially going through what. Really making sure that I'm intentional about you know talking to him and really diving in 
the word, especially in times of storm. Like, mm -hmm. it's really easy to get off track and get distracted by the storm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you fall. So really being intentional about that and um, just being mindful of what I'm thinking about mm -hmm. during this process. So thinking about what I'm thinking about. That would be my application as far as my holiness goes. Mm. And oh yeah, um, I've been led to go on a fast. Yeah. So, um, From what? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> uh, the distractions. Uh -huh. um, social media, mm. like, I'm always on the freaking phone, mm. like, like right. talking on the phone. And like, I just really right. need to like, put that down it's been such a distraction so it's fantastic so we're gonna see you at bible study more you will see me at bible study more that's good because we can't um, be here and there will be a way so you need to lead your bible study that you, you started you know what i was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about that. I, I really feel like i'm under attack like for real for real and it's been to the point where I'm just like, oh my God, I don't feel like going to Bible study. Like, I'm, I'm so tired, and the distractions really got the best of me. I just have to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, they really got the best of me, and it took me everything just to get up and come today, which I'm so happy I did because I really needed this fellowship, you know. Um, even though I look crazy, you know, <laughs> I just woke up. But, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, so being intentional, Oops, going on this path, and having consistency, being dedicated mm -hmm. to this Bible study, because I know the Lord has placed us all here for a reason and planted this seed in me for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, whether there's one or two of us, or six or seven, you know, I, I need to work on my I had a piece of advice for you because um, I feel like that sometimes where it's just like I know I need to pick up my Bible and read it or I know I need to find some type of word but I'm just I can't mm -hmm. I can't build up the <clears throat> desire or even that energy to want to do it um, and I just go on YouTube find a sermon and I make myself listen to it um, on my commute to work on my commute to the store, on my commute to somewhere, I put a sermon on. Mm. And what that does for me is that something from that sermon just sticks with me throughout the day. And I think about it like, you know, what did he mean about that? And I'll be trying to dissect it during the day so much. Sometimes I'm led to go find the, the scripture that they reference okay. in that sermon. But it's just a good way to put God in your mind some way, mm. you know. So that's something. And then when I end up on Facebook on my phone, because I deleted Instagram, deleted Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just accidentally Delete end up on Instagram. Facebook and I'm just like, what are you doing here? Yeah, like, Facebook, I'm but got angry at me. I'm never on <laughs> mm, but you deleted it? Mm. Y'all, mm. I have to get no, my Because I, I followed him a while ago. And I was like, hey, I'm going to take a break from it. And Girl, could I not. Have to but he said he had 3,000 followers a day. It's 100, so I literally can't see when people follow me. Coach was lucky. She commented on something. I recognized her name. <laughs> See, she was tagging. See, <laughs> she wouldn't be petty. She said she don't want to comment because she don't want to make it hot. Yo, likes don't count, bro. I need to see it. <laughs> Because she don't care, bro. She don't care about us. We've been inviting her for the last year. She hasn't showed up, bro. So I took I took a fast. I did a fast from social media last year, and it really worked. I fasted for 30 days, and I never get on Facebook. I never get on Instagram. And I turned on my notifications for Instagram because you guys write in the message. Mm -hmm. um, so it pops up on my phone. So that's my excuse. Yeah. Why I'm never on social media. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna. Are you in a group meet? Nope. No. Cause they don't invite me anywhere. You don't give they nobody nobody like, number. Oh, nobody know how to contact you. We invited you on Instagram. We invited you on Facebook. Yeah. Sorry. Some people don't use that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Anybody yeah. add in her? fast. Like, they really work. It's they like, why? It's so work. It's like, why, why was I even it's on this? this? <laughs> like, so long. It's such a time snatcher. But then, like, when it you get, is, but then when you get back on it again, like, more consistently, like, it starts, like, consuming. Coming back. Yeah. It's trying to creep mm-hmm. back into my I life. Like, nah, a coach <laughs> don't know, even stripping. I mean, I stripping, tri- <laughs> skipping <laughs> yourself. <laughs> skipping yourself. And if you like follow the wrong people and stuff, you can just get.